Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. Do you suffer from the summer slump? You get distracted. The weather's nice. A lot going on. And the practice numbers dip. Well, today I bring on Adriana Booth, one of our amazing coaches here. And we give you some tips so you can enjoy your summer and avoid the summer slump. So listen up. I know you guys will enjoy it. And we'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. You ever think, gosh, summer's around the corner and I want to keep our practice strong and not hit the summer slump. You know, everybody's got these distractions. The weather's good. You should enjoy it. And we're going to see how we can keep the practice in a very healthy position with one of our amazing coaches today. Her name is Adriana Booth. We call her AB. AB, thanks for being on. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to see you. Yeah, I always love having you on and talk about these things. These are topics that come up, and uh, our job in the podcast is to give you great information and great thinking from great coaches, great leaders, so that you guys can keep your practices strong and enjoy going to work. So, AB, let's talk about the problem. Ooh. Summer's right around the corner. We have the same problem. Everybody's got the same problem. Why? Why does the summer slump happen? Oh, I don't know. You know. It's been a long time since I was in school. Maybe you too, Kirk. Uh, but, you know, we still get summer brain. You know, once May rolls around, it's like, ooh, summer break, which yeah. is not existent as an adult for most of us. Um, and especially those of our clients, our friends and family that have kids in school. It's that marking point to, okay, now we got to find time to fill our time this summer. So what are we going to do with the kids? Who's going to do what? Everybody's going a different direction. And we still have to go to work and work on the office and on the business. So our brains are going in a million miles an hour in a million directions. Yeah. Mine is going a million miles an hour in a million directions all the time. But living in Milwaukee, which is where I live, um, you know, this time of year is just amazing. So the, the weather, it's just the most gorgeous days you know, day after day after day, we get five months of amazing weather, which is a whole nother podcast. But what <laughs> happens for me is, uh, you know, the flip flops come out and there's a lot of distractions. And my personal opinion is, you know, this, your, your hours might be shortened and your attention span might be distracted, but now we're going to lean in to some disciplines that can help. And whether, when it's good, that's the time to lean in. When it's bad, it's still time to lean in. And so uh, we have to just stay focused. And so you and I did a little pre-planning, you know, on this particular topic. So take us through the first one. There's a lot that you can do in the schedule right away. So give us a little idea of what the summer slump looks like and what we can do today. One of the things we want to look at is thinking of what do we have coming up? You know, we talked about um, having a year at a glance calendar so that we know within our own team, who's where this summer? Are people out on vacations? Do we have events coming up? We have graduations, graduation parties. We have all these things going on. And yes, we have a digital calendar with the schedule, but being able to see it in front of us is so much more effective when it comes to planning. So we can see the vacations, we have fun days possibly planned, we have something to look forward to. When we also think of that, we look at our schedule internally, so where our patients are coming in, and we wanna manage that time appropriately. So if we notice, well, you know, we're getting a lot of last minute cancellations, we're getting a few no-shows, our patients also get summer brain. How can we stay ahead of that? So we wanna work our recare system, you know, starting April, May, we're planning for June, July, August to get us through the summer months that we traditionally call the summer months because school is out. And we can say, okay, 
who hasn't been in? So we think about reactivating patients who maybe have a little more time, free time. Kids have more free time in the summer. So we want to really focus on our recare systems. How do we get people back into the flow? And then reactivating patients who maybe it's been a year, year and a half since they've been in. It's not that they don't want to see us. It just slips their mind usually. Yeah, I love that. So we'll, we'll take apart both of those, but we'll talk about recare. Some dentists classically change their hours for the summer and they say, wow, we're going to trim back the hours and they still do well. And then the fall rolls around and they bring back the crummy hours. Don't do that. If you're going to lean into new hours, keep them. There's my challenge to you is keep them. And most every dental practice we have, AB, and would you agree? I mean, all over the country, nobody is sitting around with empty schedules. Most every practice we see have way too many patients. So let's present that as an opportunity. You might be listening to this podcast and think, okay, I got summer right around the corner. I'm going to change my hours. I have way too many patients and way too many, you know, maybe PPOs or anything. This might be a great opportunity to work the recare schedule. And to your point, pick the ones that we really want in the schedule that we know are going to show up in the schedule. And that becomes the perfect opportunity to segue this into the fall. Anything else you'd add about recare? Goodness. I think that's a perfect time though, to think about your patient identification system. We tend to call that an ABC system and we're not classifying patients based on maybe this one's a little grumpy or this one's really fun and happy. So they're an A patient. It's the ones that show up for us. And we've talked about it in other podcasts and we have great resources on that in our process, in our program. Um, But identifying who are your A patients, you know, who are those people that just hit the mark and who we want to see, get those people reactivated and in the recare system first, and then we'll go through the B patients. Yeah, absolutely. And so just to be clear about this, Again, it's not about how rich or what social circles they run in. Your favorite patients show up and they pay. And those are your A patients. And they really make up about 80 to 90% of your production. On the other hand, 80 to 90% of your problems come from a small group of people who don't show up and don't pay and maybe aren't very nice. And this becomes a great opportunity for you and your team to really step into the patient identification system. Now, some of you think, oh my gosh, that's terrible. No, it's not terrible. Every business classifies who the best patients are for their, or customers for their business. And there are dollars that you collect that are damaging dollars. You're better off not collecting them. And it doesn't mean they're mean people. They just haven't demonstrated a value for what you do. So back to The original piece is when you're looking at the recare schedule, find a way to identify your patients. These are our A patients and our B patients, and maybe not invite back the C's, which owe you $2,200 and have canceled 11 times and are related to the dentists. Most (laughs) cases we're having fun, but this is the stuff that we always see. And then yeah, what I love the reactivate. Can you define reactivate? What is reactivation? Because I get that question all the time. How does... How does that work? What is reactivating patients? Yeah. So we think of it here at ACT as in they have not been seen for an appointment in 18 months. Now, every software is a little different in what they consider an active patient. But just to be clear, we think of it as 18 months since Kirk was seen in our practice for any type of appointment. We're still in the forefront of his brain, but he just hasn't been in. He's not so far gone that we think, oh, we're going to have to really catch up and do a lot of work when he gets in. He knows us, he trusts us, and he likely values us, but he may have just got busy and life goes fast. So we focus on seeing, hey, who hasn't been in? And likely you or your team will look at that list and say, oh, like Mr. Smith, where's he been? How, How has he missed us for 18 months? Get in touch with them, reach out. Most of us have systems we can send a text, a quick call. Hey, I care about you. Wondering where you're at. Is everything okay? We'd love to see you in the office. Make it personal. Yeah. So just to review, you know, you've got patients that need to be scheduled. Those are your active patients. Mm -hmm. And you and I were together when Kathy Brodo was here. And we have always used the 18 months. And she said, looking at the data, you may want to reconsider that it's now 24 months because we're still coming out of the COVID 
era with patients, some of these patients that have come to your practice just haven't been back for different reasons. And I really like what she said for a period of time. And so we're going to get the patients back that are probably in the 18 to 24 month window. And then we're going to look at the people that have fallen outside of that window and get, you know, see if we can invite them back to our yeah. practice. And yeah. so again, we're looking for the right type of patient for the practice, thus avoiding the summer slump. Now you're also a big fan of having fun as a team and you're, you know, you were talking this week to a couple of practices about social media and how you can just rethink that process getting closer to summer. Can you share that? Yeah, actually it's just uh, Monday morning. I had a great call with uh, one of our clients. Uh, She's in New York and it's the same thing with her. You know, everybody's moving in different directions and they want to make sure they keep that engagement with their patients and have some fun doing it. Um, We are creating a content calendar internally um, for marketing. And really it's about what kind of posts do your patients want to see? They want to get to know you. They want to have some fun. You know, Um, they want to see what you're doing in the office. So we're creating this, okay, maybe one meeting a month, we spend our practice management time doing something fun. Right. So maybe we make a couple fun videos that we can post on our social media. Um, we could even think of having an ice cream social. Everyone brings in their favorite ice cream and, you know, everybody tries a little something new. But think about those things for the summer is it doesn't always have to be so head down serious. We do need to lighten it up a little bit so that when it does have to you know, we have to pull that serious energy out and really work hard. We have it. We have it in the reserves because we know something fun's coming. Absolutely. So these resources are available when the weather gets nice. I mean, they're available all the time. But you and I were okay. talking about um, Dr. Mike Burnham in yeah. uh, Colorado. He did this. He rented an ice cream truck and he's an oral surgeon. So he went around to all of his referral sources and for one day, they delivered happiness. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. People loved it. They'd park in the parking lot outside. Also, you know, you mentioned Jason Stoner, who's a periodontist. He had a taco truck come to the office for a, was it for a team meeting? I'm hoping. Oh. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Don't Literally. sweat it at all. So sorry. I was like, I saw him walk up. I'm like, just leave it and go. He rang the yeah. doorbell. That's all right. I got it time stamped. Those guys will take it right out. So 1138 to 1220. So I'll go back to the Jason Stoner question. Yep. How's that? So you, you wrapped up with Mike. Mike, Mike Burnham. Burnham. Yeah. So start okay. the, start the edit here when you guys are listening. So also Jason Stoner had a taco truck come to his office during a team meeting. Share that story. I love that one. Yeah, Jason Stoner, awesome guy. Kirk, I know you've um, worked with Jason for years in lectures, and he's um, in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, I was a dental hygienist in an office that we referred to Jason, and he sent out this huge um, invite to all of his referring offices. Hey, we're having a taco truck at the office. Come over grab some lunch. It's on us. Thank you guys for all being awesome. I mean, it was just such an awesome gesture. And of course, everybody went because not only do you get to have something fun, but you get to reconnect with people that you don't get to see all the time. Right. And so you're using the fun word, which I love. And I always say, if it isn't fun, it won't last. Yeah. So let me go back to a couple of things that you said. This is great. And getting into summer is a great time, again, to lean into those things that really work. And AB, what you're saying is number one, knowing everyone's schedule is really important because a lot of things that get unspoken, you're like, I didn't know you were going away next week or we were out. Um, So have that very much 
transparent mm-hmm. for everyone to see, whether it be on the wall or digitally. And then creating a fun schedule. So Anne-Marie Gorsica created this whole schedule in marketing, which I love. If you read any of her books, she's all about creating systems. But I love one of the, one of the things that she said is like, create a regular fun schedule. So here's an idea for you as a dentist. You have 12 months in a year. If you have 12 team members, each one of them is responsible for a month and they get to do something and they choose it for the group to make it fun. If it's left to the dentist, you can imagine how this always works. So make sure you've got a steward or a champion of fun here at the office. We have somebody, her name is Laura, and she determines fun things to do every single quarter. There's some things on her schedule. I don't even know what she has to so we're either giving back or we're having fun. Um, and, and the point is this, is make sure that you got a little bit of laughter and purpose going on in the office. Also, in social media, during this time, you can lay off on like trying to promote the practice and let's start promoting our team. Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a great time to reconnect with your patient base by introducing your team. You know, and some of you are going to say, well, but everybody knows our team. But that's not true. You know, we see each other when patients come in the office, you see them. We always know a lot about them, but they don't usually know so much about us. So it's a great time to even do little mini interviews. Um, You know, Jamie and I talked about doing these like hallway interviews where they're planned. So you have three questions that you prep the other team member with. And it'd be like me passing Kirk in the hallway. Kirk, favorite ice cream, favorite color. Yeah. You know, bucket list travel item just to even make it fun. And it's very spontaneous feeling and your patients will love it. Even if you are OK with posting a picture of maybe your family or a vacation pets, something that they can when they come in the office. Oh, I saw your picture. I have a lab. Also, we have the same type of dog or our kids have the same name. And that's it's all about connection. I know you and I have done a podcast on connection and relationships being so super important. And it's not only inside our team in the office, it's with our patients as well. Yeah, absolutely. And the ultimate test is that you create regular systems or regular meetings or regular budgeting with the help of a great coach that when summer comes around, you can say, hey, listen, I understand everybody's got things going on and we can afford to give our best energy to things that matter most, which might include being out of the office for a little bit and we still hit our numbers. My hope is if you're listening to this podcast, you're not working crazy hours to try to keep the production or collections high because that's when you start to resent coming back to the office. We've got a window for our families and for this weather. And so our hope is that you can think and add some great energy to the practice um, prior to the summer and then throughout the entire year so you can enjoy the summer. So any last yeah. thoughts you have, AB, on just how to avoid the summer slump? You know, just really making sure you're being mindful of it, yeah. speaking it, you know, say the words summer slump, like, you know, no summer slump here, you know, and like, you know, Kirk used to have the one where you had um, no energy suckers. <laughs> and right. A lot of our clients had that all over the office. And it's those little catchy things, though, that it does get into your mind. And when you're aware of it, you will actually just naturally avoid it. So you don't get into those negative habits. Yeah. Very well said. Very well said. Well, thanks for being on, AB. We wanted to give you guys a little shot in the arm, a little summer boost here. Uh, So hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. So stick around, AB. We'll always say goodbye goodbye to everybody else. But uh, thank you guys for listening today. And as always, we're excited to hear any ideas that you guys have. I get these suggestions all the time about like, Maybe we should do a podcast on this or that. And we're lining them up so that you guys can consume the information and create a better practice in their life. And lastly, enjoy the summer. Embrace the summer. (laughs) And let your team members enjoy the summer. And find some creative ways to keep the practice growing in that process. So until you guys hear from us next time or see us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the Best Practices Show. Enjoy your summer. 